this is the third and final part of a discussion of what Microsoft Fabric means for your existing skills and investments in Microsoft Azure's data and analytics services. You can find a link to the first two parts in the description. In this final part, Tom talks about how Milliman resolves the long-term outlook required in the insurance industry with the very fast pace of change that occurs in cloud platforms. So Milliman works in the insurance industry, which tends to have quite long time frame perspectives. So a lot of the products that actually involve have a very long life cycle. It's a heavily regulated industry. So things often tend to move quite slowly. Uh, whereas the nature of cloud platforms tends to be very fast iteration and everyone's driving to innovate and get the next thing out there. But the, the dark side of this is that things often go away quite quickly as well. So we've already had two versions of Data Lake in Microsoft Azure, and now we've got one lake. Um, things seem, technologies in the cloud seem to have a relatively short shelf life. Um, how does this affect Milliman? Hmm. Yeah, um, well... I'm gonna, this is going to sound self-serving, but we've made some pretty good bets. Um, so we did manage to sidestep some of the early data products that didn't quite make it. Um, I think the underlying decision process for us has been, let's bet on open source stuff because we're not just relying on one vendor to support it. And let's also bet on things that have high levels of adoption in the core to the platform. So like our compute platform is something that we've we've invested heavily in ourselves. Um, it's kind of core to our IP. Uh, the ability to distribute our calculations at global scale is 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 a hard problem to solve, but it means that we can go to our customers with a very robust solution. Um, so we try our best to make bets where we're not getting blown out of the water. Um, there's, that's, that's one of the hesitations with moving quick with Fabric, right, is what's the market going to think of it? It's, it's tough to talk into the future about predicting whether people are going to fail. And just because I work in insurance doesn't mean that I understand the future. Um, <laughs> uh, but you have to think about it, right? You've got to be really careful. And I think what you need to do is judge, you know, past performance isn't a predictor of future success. If you look at Microsoft's past performance, you may decide that you don't want to bet right? Because they made some mistakes. Um, and some people have been burnt by those mistakes. Um, but um, what you could do is look at the decisions they made to move forward. Power BI as a platform is well adopted. It's in every enterprise business in the world, pretty much. It's used a lot. Um, Azure isn't going anywhere. Uh, and if you think about where all the data in Azure is stored, one lake's built on top of it. Um, so, you know, if, if one lake were to vanish, your data would still be in data lake gen two, you know, the APIs you used to get at it have been around for years to so other tools integrate with them. So you've got a migration path in and a migration path out Delta parquet, right? Industry standard, you know, whatever, a, you know, big number of bytes is like zettabytes or whatever the, you know, and there was a great article about Apple using, you know, huge petabytes worth of data on Databricks in Delta Lake, right? So the tech works, it's proven, other vendors are using it. You have a migration path in, and you have a migration path out. Um, so where's the lock-in with Fabric? Um, I don't think there is, right? Well, there, there probably is, and maybe Ed will tell me because he's used it probably more than I have. But um, that's for me is the decisions what I'm looking at is like, okay, so there's two standards-based um, ways to store big data, Apache um, Iceberg and um, Delta Lake, both are open source. Um, Apache Iceberg probably has more contributors, um, but it's used by Snowflake. So it's got a big um, player data vendor kind of reading in and out of it. At the end of the day, it's still parquet at the bottom. So it's an easy migration path. And I would imagine there's connectors between the two of those things, Apache um, uh, uh, iceberg and, and, and Delta Delta Lake. So, yeah, you've got to choose one of the two. That's an important decision to make. So that's where we're looking first. Is like where do we keep all of our data, um, and then um, and then go from there. Uh, so I'm not as worried as I was in the past about making the wrong bet because the way we made bets in the past, thanks to engines coaching, um, 
you know, we've worked with you for 10 years, so you've really helped us understand where to invest and not invest. Um, we've tried to shield our end users from technology. So for example, we use SQL Server today to serve data to Power BI. They, they don't know that, right? It's just a Power BI report. They see the Power BI report, so it's an important investment decision for us that Power BI didn't die, because that would have been an expensive thing for us to have to deal with. Um, but we waited to see if Power BI got broad adoption. And when we adopted it, it was early with Embedded. We were, you know, we launched that. The last, one of my last data videos in public was with Josh Kaplan on the launch of, you know, who's Josh is now, um, is Mr. One Lake, but before he was Mr. Power BI Embedded. So, um, you know, we did have to make a decision early there, but we kind of knew that Power BI was, was not going anywhere when we did that. So, yeah, it's hard. And it will be hard when something goes away because you have to spend money to replace it. Um, but, um, you can abstract away complexity and hide things, you know, SQL, I think is going to go away for us one way or the other, um, with, um, direct query, whatever they called it, um, direct right. lake. Yeah. Uh, that's huge, right? Cause that removes latency from people being able to see numbers. It provides better performance than we were getting through SQL, more feature rich things with DAX. So that could be a good decision, but customers wouldn't notice. They just see things get better, which is good. I think the interesting point when you brought up Databricks and Snowflake and Fabric and kind of choosing between these these data platforms is now that they are all kind of opening up feature sets which makes certain elements transferable, that doesn't mean that you're, you're kind of in the clear. There's, there's still benefits that you get from betting on a single platform, right? With, with, with Fabric, whilst there's no lock-in, so to speak, because they're using open standards, they're using existing protocols, they are building optimizations that are only you're only going to benefit from in Fabric, like directly, for example. It's a as a prime candidate because they're using this um, proprietary kind of compression algorithm. That if you're writing a table from Databricks, you can't write it in that format. You'll have to essentially re-optimize on the Fabric side. So you've got to think: is that additional overhead worth it to say oh, I'm I'm going to bet on all of them because I want to use that from that, that from that, that from that? Um, because everything's open now. Well, it's kind of it's 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 a little bit more nuanced than that. You will still get that kind of better returns if you bet on on one or the other, um, at least for a, for a specific kind of project or, or or platform. Because there are these kind of optimizations that these vendors can apply because they have a, a bet on a specific uh, format, um, and they know their engines the best. Uh, so, kind of the engine layer. Um, kind of the, the vertipack, there are going to certainly be s still things that aren't going to be released into the open source. So you, you've got to try and think, well, what's their what's their unique selling point really for um, for for this product? And the, kind of the te technical unique selling points are kind of going away, or they're all kind of converging because each of these vendors are providing kind of similar tool sets. So it's it's almost about kind of the uh, kind of the socio technical side of how can how do our users use this platform and use the additional kind of value add features to their benefit so it's it's a difficult question and i think it'll be uh it's it's hard to say we can go totally kind of vendor agnostic here because there are still benefits you get from choosing a specific and and that's been that's been key to up to to my strategy with technology is um the whole is better than the sum of its parts right so you, if you do go with the whole thing with Fabric, you get a whole load of more value because they've thought about how those things integrate. Um, they've leveraged IP. They're not going to make open. It's their differentiated value, right? So do you believe in that? Um, are you locked into it is an important question. Um, but uh, if you feel that that's worth locking, then you go for it. And if you're not, then there's a pretty good option to try it, right? There's the same on on. on Databricks is side right. They've got proprietary stuff that they're not open sourcing that makes their solution differentiated as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, betting on a vendor rather than trying to hedge. So we've bet big with Microsoft over the years. We, we've been asked to be multi-cloud in the past. For me, then I'm building to the lowest common denominator across the platforms, which is difficult because now I'm, you know, to your point earlier, having to not kind of leverage the, the better bits of the platforms. Or if I do, then I'm doing it multiple times to leverage the better bits of the platforms. Yeah. Um, and the other thing we did is, you know, the homogeneity of it all. Like we, we literally last year stopped supporting on-premises for high-performance computing. 
because it was very difficult for us to be able to optimize for every you know different configuration of a high performance computing setup a customer would have we have some super sophisticated hbc environments that we can run on and we've got some that are you know um, shadow it pcs under the desk right and making calculations run reliably in those two different settings is somewhat challenging because there's different things and now in the cloud we know we're targeting we know we can depend on infinity band networking we can depend on highly available storage we can depend on these types of cpus we can optimize for different instructions we know we're going to have a gpu in this we know we're going to have an amd chip in that we can run our calcs where we know the calcs are going to run well that is massively valuable for our ability to go quickly and deliver value to our customers because we don't have to think well what about that weird situation that could happen if they do this particular thing right so having homogeneity and control of the platform being able to influence the vendor having a deep meaningful partnership and going big you know they're, they're, they're scary bets but they pay off because you have a lot of upside from yeah. being committed to an outcome Okay, well, thank you, Tom, very much for sharing your insights with us. You've given us a perspective that's obviously very deeply informed by years of experience with working with this stuff. Um, do you have any more last thoughts to share with us on Fabric before we go? Um, no, I, I would just encourage people to look. You know, we're looking seriously, looking, you know, finding ways to prove it works at scale um, without burning a customer along the way. So um, try the same and um, be excited. Don't be scared by it. It's it's going to free your time up to do stuff that really matters, I think. Okay, well, Tom, Ed, thank you both very much.